top fuel dragsters have some insane aerodynamics, even going back over 50 years ago. Massive wings and tons of downforce are what make top fuel dragsters the fastest accelerating cars in the entire world. And I just happen to be building an RC dragster. So let's explore why this much downforce is necessary to get these levels of acceleration. And of course, we're gonna test to see if we can get the crazy acceleration that you see with dragsters. The rear wing on a top field dragster is said to produce over 10,000 pounds of downforce because of the high speeds in the triple element design. And since this rear wing is so far back from the rear wheels, all of this downforce tries to pick the front of the car up, which is why we have this front wing to load the front end and bring it back down at high speed to keep it stable. And these massive aero loads and driving forces can be so great that the middle of the frame bends upwards up to eight inches. And in some cases, we get catastrophic failure. But why wouldn't they just move the rear wing forward like these wild rides from the 60s? That would at least put the downforce in front of the rear wheels, right? And my guess is because of stability. Because with the wing that far behind the rear wheels, if things get a little sideways, the aero and drag forces will work to restore the heading of the car. Whereas if the wing is in front of the rear wheels, those aero loads will actually continue to push the car off course. With this much drag force acting behind the rear wheels, you can almost think of it like a badminton birdie. And this means my build will definitely have a huge rear wing behind the rear wheels. And top field dragsters also get almost a thousand pounds of downforce from the thrust of the exhaust alone. And because this exhaust is angled backwards, you're also going to get a forward propulsive force adding to the already insane acceleration from the massive grip between the wheels and the ground. Even these side panels, also known as mud flaps, have an aerodynamic benefit. The massive rear wheels and underbody produce quite a bit of lift, and a lot of this at the wheels is just a function of uh, the fast air flowing over the top, creating a low pressure region in the uh, high pressure region under the front lower leading edge of the wheel, creating both lift and a lot of drag. These mud flaps are said to counter about 1,000 200 pounds of this lift, without all this downforce, top field dragsters would be much slower. And as I walk through some of the math for my build, it'll start to make a lot of sense as to why. But to give you a little bit of a hint, these gassers here have a really high drag coefficient and pretty much no lift. So the faster they go, the less traction they'll have to be able to dedicate to accelerating as a lot of that traction is going just to fight drag. My build is starting out with just a frame from an RC funny car. And without a body, it'll actually probably produce a little bit of lift. And the drag coefficient of this thing is gonna be absolutely terrible as well. Dragsters have to accelerate as fast as possible to win, and that acceleration comes from traction at the rear wheels. The traction force is a function of weight over the rear wheels and the coefficient of friction at launch. But as we speed up, we gain downforce, which adds more traction. However, it also has to overcome aerodynamic drag and rolling resistance. So our traction available to accelerate the car is uh, approximately the weight over the rear wheels plus downforce at the rear wheels minus wind resistance and rolling resistance. Weight transfer also matters, but I don't want to get too boring too fast, so let's keep moving with the build. So for my design, I've added a massive rear wing to get as much downforce over the rear wheels as possible. And you guessed it, I added a front wing to keep the nose down. The body will probably give me a little bit of downforce too, and this thing overall produces a lot of downforce. At 135 miles per hour, it's estimated to be about 26 pounds of downforce for a car that only weighs 5.4 pounds. That's five times as much. Unfortunately, the car is also really draggy. At that same 135 miles per hour, I will get about 14 pounds of drag. And while this drivetrain has a no load speed of about 213 miles per hour, and when you add in all the drag, it's really limited to about 130 miles per hour because the system is power limited. All right, enough, it's getting boring. Let's go test and see how this thing handles.
So far, this car runs incredibly well, especially as it accelerates into the higher speeds. I'm also doing something a little bit tricky with the throttle and exponential curves so that when it launches, it doesn't break traction at all. But if I turn all that off, you can see this car has no problem breaking the wheels loose and doing a wheelie all the way down the track. And to understand what I'm doing here, we need to go back to our downforce versus drag discussion. Here, I've plotted out my max theoretical acceleration versus speed based on this car's downforce and drag. With absolutely unlimited power, I could get to 200 miles per hour from zero in something like 5.6 seconds. And that's because as my speed increases, my downforce also increases quadratically which means my traction increases quadratically, which means my acceleration increases quadratically. And that's why it's so critical to maintain a downforce to drag ratio, at least greater than one, but as high as possible realistically is where you're going for. So hopefully now you get a little bit more feel as to why dragsters need a bunch of downforce even though they're just going in a straight line. And even better, I take these downforce versus drag curves and my theoretical acceleration to program my RC transmitter for open loop traction control, which basically means I set my throttle trigger to only go off over a certain time span and that increase in acceleration follows a quadratic curve that roughly approximates what I'm calculating on my computer. And this keeps me from breaking traction at any point in the run so I don't lose control too quickly and throw it into a curb. Top field dragsters actually do something kind of similar with their clutch settings so that they're only applying so much torque based on where they are in the run. Okay, now let's get back to a little bit more testing and see if we can easily break 100 miles per hour in less than five seconds. Okay, that one <laughs> didn't go so well. I had designed and professionally 3D printed some custom hex adapters so that I could use these specific Traxxas drag wheels. But they gave out at only 60 miles an hour, and even with a top of the line premium 3D printed material, we see some of the limitations we're gonna face with 3D printing and 12 millimeter hexes. And as expected, the Traxxas drag slicks didn't come close to making it either. The foam itself was the failure mode here, is it just tore itself apart inside of the wheel and became massively imbalanced. So now we're gonna 3D print some 17 millimeter hexes ourselves Ourselves and get back to testing with some BSR Team Purple foams. And in this case, I was able to hit 91 miles an hour and I'm still absolutely blown away at how well this car performs as it gets into the higher speeds, especially above like 30 miles an hour. It's insanely stable, like it's on rails and it just digs in and accelerates faster and faster. The wings do exactly what they're designed to do and that's keep the car planted and straight as it accelerates as quickly as it can. As a matter of fact, I could probably reduce overall downforce a little bit and be totally fine. But this thing is, catastrophically terrible under braking, which is why I'm chasing this wheel across the parking lot. If I brake just barely too hard, it immediately goes into a spin and there is no hope of recovering control. And now I see why top field dragsters use parachutes as their primary brakes. And the overall design can be improved quite a bit, mostly through drag reduction. This is just a very inefficient aerodynamic shape. And I feel like I could improve the drag coefficient and frontal area quite a bit to get my max theoretical speed closer to like 175 miles an hour. And my launches were pretty terrible. From zero to like 15 miles an hour, it was incredibly slow. And this goes down to how I'm programming the throttle. I still had a lot of fine tuning to do, but obviously I threw it into a curb before I could get to the low end tuning as I was mostly focused on the high speed aerodynamics. And now I'm torn because I love the theory behind high speed aerodynamics, but I 
don't really like speed running with RC cars. And that's because to get an area to run these cars regularly over 100 miles an hour is very challenging. You need a ton of space and nobody around because of how dangerous it can be. Seriously, the biggest skill a speed runner can have is actually access to a nice long runway that's very smooth and without anyone around. And I was constantly having issues with either radio range or running out of space. The parking lot I'm using is only about 650 feet long, but I can only accelerate for maybe 400 feet or so before I need to brake or turn or maneuver. And any tiny stick or bump can absolutely send this car out of control just because compared to the front wheels, it's so large. And while going 91 miles per hour in a parking lot is really, really fast, in the RC speed running world, 91 miles per hour isn't that fast. Those guys are regularly running like 180 to 190 miles an hour, and the record is 203 miles per hour. I do believe that if I had regular access to a quarter mile drag strip, it would be a lot more fun and I could probably get a lot closer to the current record, but so far all of the drag strips I've reached out to have either not responded or kind of gone silent after they realized I wanted to use toy cars instead of real cars on it. But hopefully one of these videos will get enough attention to eventually get me on a track and I can go for some records. Thanks everyone and I have some really fun projects coming up as well. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments and as always I look forward to the next one.